guys, so today I am really excited. We are going to be doing an Alice in Wonderland themed cake. It's going to be crazy, but I'm also working with Quali Pops. He's a good friend of mine and he is doing a beautiful Alice inspired dress. As soon as you're done watching my video, please go over, check him out and subscribe to his channel. I will leave links at the end of this video. So like, keep watching to the end of this video. So this crazy cake needs a crazy cake board. So I start off by covering my cake board in fondant and then I painted it blue using different shades of blue and kind of wiping it on and off with some paper towel to make it look almost marbly and mysterious looking. I used some black food coloring and I painted on the Roman numeral clock. I painted on the little numbers and all the little lines. To create Absalom, I thought I would do a little three-dimensional butterfly. So I rolled out my royal blue fondant. I used a butterfly impression on it. I just made sure all of those lines were nice and stuck to it. Then I cut out his nice little wings. And I made his body and rested that on a piece of cardboard that was kind of folded. You use a black and a little marker and then really just colored in all of those little tiny lines so he can dry so that way when he's dry he stands up like a little butterfly. Needs a teacup saucer so I thought I would make it themed with the first theme of my first teacup which is going to be the white rabbit in the waistcoat. So I cut out my teacup saucer and I draped it over a little cardboard thingy that Kevin made. Thank you Kevin. No problem. And I let that dry overnight well, actually for a couple days so that way it dries and it holds its shape as well as with the butterfly. Before I started decorating any of my teacups, I wanted to make sure that these cakes were going to stack up okay and not all just like fall over. So I started stacking them up on my cake board, making sure I shaved a little bit off some of the bottom so he's kind of angling this way and then the next one's angling this way and the next one's angling this way, going all the way up. And then once I had that all stacked up, I took it all apart so that way I could decorate the teacups. So no one wants to sit there and look at a cake that's just like, oh that's a cool looking cake. <laughs> 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 so I crumb coat it using my buttercream icing. Recipe is here if you guys want to click there and check out recipe. And then I made sure that it was nice and smooth, covered it in white fondant and then used my toothpick to texture it so it looks all fluffy like a rabbit. Now this rabbit needs some clothes, <laughs> so I'm making his little waistcoat out of royal blue fondant, wrapping that around the sides, and then finishing off that top rim of my teacup using just like a rolled out log of blue fondant. Using gold colored fondant, I rolled that out, and using my circle cutters, I cut out different size circles, layered those all up, cutting one out of white fondant. I dusted all of the gold using a gold luster dust, used my black edible marker, drawing on all the little lines of my little cute watch. Glued it all together with some water. I put all my saucer onto my cake board and then put my teacup onto that. Now we can finish decorating it. Then using my wheel tool, I just delicately kind of press that into my teacup, creating the little button holes using gray fondant to create these cute little buttons going down his little waistcoat. And then for the chain, you are gonna just roll out a little thin kind of log of the gold fondant, fold that in half, and then twist and twist and twist until you create this little chain shape. And then dust that gold and wrap that going all the way around your teacup with another little ring. Then for the teacup handle, you're gonna need a larger little log of royal blue fondant. I've added Tylo's powder into it because we want this to not droop and actually just stay in place. And then just use toothpicks to stick those into the cake so that way it stays on and doesn't fall off. Teacup number two, the Mad Hatter's hat. The Mad Hatter is by far my favorite character. So I crumb coated my cake and covered it in that dark green fondant, but first I wanted to texture my fondant because his hat has this really interesting kind of texture to it. So I actually used, it's like a wallpaper, <laughs> well it like a little strip of wallpaper that I got at the store, obviously it hasn't been on the wall yet, come on guys, I wouldn't take it off the wall and then put it on my fondant. And then I like textured my fondant and covered the hat. Then I added on the rim of my teacup and used a bunch of different color dust to really add in 
all of those awesome details of the Mad Hatter's hat using brown, black, dark green, light green, mixing them all together, doing little accents, and drawing on lots of different kind of curvy lines to really bring out all the details that is the Mad Hatter's hat. For the sash going around his hat, I used a Dusty Rose colored fondant, rolled it out really nice and thin, and then kind of draped it to kind of make it looked like fabric wrapping around and almost tapering down towards the bottom edge. I'm gonna level that off using some brown fondant, which later is gonna act as our tea flowing down the cake. Then I stack that on top of my first tea cup and continued adding the details. So he has this little burnt piece of paper that says 10-6, no idea what that means, but moving on, I just added some brown color dust to make it kind of look burnt, glued that on, used some spaghetti, as the base for those little pin needles that are sticking in his hat, dusted those gold, added on the details, 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 added three dowels and a cake plate to support the weight of the second two teacups. Moving on to teacup number three, the Cheshire Cat. I love the Cheshire Cat, but I love even more the way that this teacup turned out. Everything just works so well with it. So to create the Cheshire Cat, I crumb coated the cake, same as always, covered it in the gray fondant, and then I added on all the same fur texture using the toothpick. Then using my balling tool, I very, very gently impressed into my teacup to create those little holes for his eyes. Use my turquoise fondant and made his little eyes and then outlined where exactly I wanted his mouth to go and color that in and then added on the like I call them chops I don't know if they're actually chops but they're those like little things that go basically above like if they're dogs or cats kind of I just call them the chops <laughs> so like I added on the Cheshire cat chops <laughs> Adding more fur texture, more fur texture, making sure everything was nice and blended in and didn't look like I just stuck like a piece of bonnet onto my teacup. I just used black color dust and just lightly dusted that around his face just to add a little bit more texture, a little bit more depth and color. Then I made lots of teeny tiny little teeth using ivory fondant and glued those onto my teacup. Using pink fondant, I made his little cute, little cute nose colored in his eyes, again, black marker, so handy. And then added that little speck of white, which tends to bring any character, kind of they look lifelike, I guess, with that little speck of white on him. At this point, my Cheshire Cat's looking pretty good, but he's also looking really crazy because his eyes are just popping, which I know they're floating eyes, but we wanted him to look like Cheshire Cat crazy, not like crazy crazy. So I wanted to create a little eyelid, rolled out a little strip of, the gray font and added that on and then kind of blended that around. I felt that really brought his whole face together. Leveled that off with some more tea. Stack it with the teacups. Anyone else thinking that this stack of teacups is looking crazy by now? I am so excited about this cake. If you guys have been following me all week on Instagram, the icing artist dot Lori, you'll know I've been posting things like this for crazy because I'm so proud of this cake. I pushed myself with this cake and if I can do it, you guys can do it too. Now that you're all pumped up, let's get on to teacup number four. The Red Queen, or as I like to think of her, the Queen of Hearts. The white rose is red, that's all I can think of when I think of the Red Queen. So I covered it in white fondant, boring, but don't worry, we're gonna jazz it up. For the rim of the teacup, I thought it would be really fun to bring out those big blue eyeshadow that she has, which is ridiculous. And then I wanted to add on her crown. I rolled out a strip of the gold color fondant, used my square fondant cutter, and I just cut out little triangles out of that, and that's gonna create your crown, dusting that, gluing it on, then gluing that onto my teacup. I rolled it really thin strips of white fondant, ruffled it with my skewer, rolling that along that edge on my foam mat, and then kind of glued that onto my teacup into a circle, and then keep continuing in circle after circle until you get to the center and you just kind of roll it until you create this beautiful little flower, and it looks so pretty. I'm so happy with the way that rose looks. And yet again, we're leveling with, with the teeth. Yeah, guys, we are about to stick the final cake on top of our tower 
of teacups. So I put my Queen of Hearts teacup right on top. For the handle of this teacup, I wanted to make a red heart. She's the Queen of Hearts, so of course she's a red heart handle. I shape that into the shape of the heart, wrap that around the teacup, and stick it in using some toothpicks. For the cat's handle, I came up with a genius idea. I was going to make the handle out of his tail, so I made the tail out of a, again, little log of grape bond and added on that fur texture, added on all those stripes, and then I glued it wrapping all the way around the back of his body, upwards into this little loop, and then like spikes out into this little tail. I love this handle. Can you guys tell? I actually really love this teacup. Now it's time to finish off this cake. I add in all of my tea going all over the top of the cake, flowing over the side, flowing over the other side, adding these little strips and these little spikes, adding texture all over the place to make it look like little ripples. It's time to paint those white roses red. So I'm using my red food coloring. I'm just gonna paint half of this rose red to really make it look like that wet paint look. This tea is not looking like tea. It's looking like brown fondant on my teacups. I can't have brown fondant on my beautiful teacups. So I take my gel paste so that way it looks all glossy and wet. Not only that, I add brown food coloring so that way it looks like a different variation of color. Paint that all over all of my tea, just bringing everything really together. Adding the final touch to my cake is my blue butterfly. So I pick them up to put them on the cake and then I break my in half. <sighs> but it's okay, because we're in a good mood, because this is a crazy cake and we're so happy with it. So we're gonna keep going. I make a little paste out of the royal fawn and I glue it together so it's like a one-sided butterfly. And I use that same paste to help glue him right onto the handle of one of the teacups. I've never made anything like this before. This isn't just like teacups. This is like a tower of topsy-turvy teacups. I love Alice in Wonderland and I'm so happy that I was able to kind of bring together all the things that I really wanted to. I had so much fun making it. If you guys really enjoyed this cake and want to see more insane cakes like this, share the video and give it a thumbs up because the more popular this cake is, the more cakes I'm going to do like this for you guys. And I really push the limits with this cake. I want to see you guys push the limits too. Really try to see what your limits are and how you can push them. I'm challenging you to go home and try something that you've never tried before. Push yourself to have no cake limits. And I want to see you guys using that hashtag, no cake limits, because really you can accomplish anything. And I have no training, but yet I can do that. So like, what can you guys do? If you guys really want to check out somebody who has not only like no cake limits, but no dessert limits, you have to check out Quali Pops' channel because he made a beautiful Alice inspired dress cake. So click this link, go over, check out his channel, tell him Lori sent you. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button if you guys want to see more cakes like this. And I will hopefully see you guys next week. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it.